Hello, livestock friends, and welcome to this edition of Before the Bid. This is a podcast dedicated to the livestock sales industry where we go behind the scenes of the operation and speak straight to the sellers. We discuss topics about the important aspects of their operation, location, the people behind the prep work, and talk about some of the animals that will be offered to you, the prospective buyers. Hopefully, you've got your sale catalog close by. You might have to go look through that pile on your desk. But if not, then you're probably like me and driving down the road or busy with chores around the farm. And that's okay, too. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you enjoy this segment of Before the Bid. I'm your host, Andy Howell. Welcome, Livestock Friends, to this edition of Before the Bid. And before the bid tonight, uh, we are going back into the swine world. As uh, most of you know, the pig sales are uh, hot right now, and uh, it is pig sale season. And so tonight, we're going to go to Ohio, and we're going to go to Conover, Ohio. And we're going to talk to a guy that uh, has had a sale for 30 years now. And he is also uh, in his 31st year of being a 4-H uh, advisor, so I uh, want to thank him for all that he does to, to go back and uh, uh, give back to these young people. Uh, he's a young man that's shown all over Ohio, all across the country. Uh, he's a Sun Glow feed salesman as well, and he has the uh, Genetic Power Pig Sale that's going to be held Saturday, April 18th at 10 o'clock in Conover, Ohio, and I want to welcome to the show uh today chris wintro and uh chris how are things over in ohio uh right now we're uh extremely soggy uh humid and uh you know it's nothing but mud wall to wall for us right yeah i think that's kind of one of those things across the country uh, I was seeing some things on Facebook today, and they had Florida or they had Texas stuff that uh, they had some cows swimming uh, out of there so so, Chris, uh, I want to want to thank you for joining me uh, for uh, this edition of Before the Bid, and and to start out, and I usually always have everybody start out, kind of introduce uh, your family and in your program just a little bit, and uh, those that are involved right there with your program. Uh, well, uh, my, like I said, my Chris Wintro, and uh, you know I appreciate you uh, taking time out to do this, Andy. Uh, uh, we've I raised pigs all my life, and that's. 50 years or so, uh, give or take, and uh, uh, we run about 10 to 15 sows, peers and crosses, uh, mostly Yorkshires, Durocks, Polands, and a few crosses. Um, um, we've done it forever. My wife, Deanna, and my uh, 13-year-old son, Clark, help. My wife's the uh, brains on the inside, and uh, now my son's discovering what uh, hard labor is, so uh, we appreciate his help, especially since he's been uh, off school here for all this week and probably the remainder of the summer. So uh, I uh, welcome the help. Right. Sounds like you might have him for a while now. Uh, yeah, I, I have a feeling that they will not be going back to school till next August. Right. Right. One of those uh, one of those unfortunate things. So, yeah, you know, day so, by day. Yeah. Well, will you tell us, take us back uh, a little bit. You, you kind of gave us just a little bit of history there, but will you give us a little more history? Where did where did Chris Wintrow uh, and, and Wintrow show pigs get their start? Uh, we always raised uh, Hampshire's. Um, uh, we used to buy our Hampshire sows off uh, Andrews and Bond. For those people who remember that, that goes back a, a few years, lots of years. And uh, we used to buy them off Don Gosomsky also. Uh, and, and my father and, you know, my brother and my sister and my whole family, we just kind of raised pigs. We loved pigs. And uh, once they got out of it, my passion stayed. And I took it to another level as far as the show pig thing. Um, you know, I had several mentors growing up. Uh, Dick Kemp was a huge influence. Daryl Furlong. Uh really did a lot for me. Uh, I worked with Ron Pierce over here. Uh, you know, I've kind of taken a lot from some of those guys and, 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 uh, they've kind of helped mold me to where I am today. Cause you haven't always been in the show pig business. No. Um, I mean, we, we rate, I mean, back when we first started doing this, you mean 
we had show circuits for breeding stock around all the county fairs in Ohio, and we would take a show string of Hampshire's, and that's all my brother and I would do all summer, would go around and take, you know, five or six gilts and boars and yearling sows to different county fairs and show, and, and we even helped some neighbors show, uh, show some of their Yorkshires, and uh, uh, that's what we kind of did. The show pig was really not in terms back then it was more of a breeding stock and and market animals you know the term show pig kind of came later and we kind of kind of jumped into that okay but you guys still you guys do still raise some females and and show some females and and things like that yep females are a heart of our herd and and we've been blessed to put in some key foundation females that i've built around and, and kept and that's influenced our Yorkshire and Duroc herd here. And uh, uh, it's been nice to, to have those females in there. Yeah. Why don't you talk about some of that genetic base that, that you've got put together? Our, our original female came um, from um, the Garrett's that they had sold um, a female. Uh, it was down at the, out at the uh, Duncan, Oklahoma years and years ago, she was out of slam dunk. And uh, she was about a $4,000 guild. I remember watching her sell. And uh, the people who bought her were just about 20 minutes from me, 30 minutes from me. And uh, uh, they had a litter of uh, pigs out of her. And and he saw me somewhere and he said, hey, I got some gilts you need to come look at. And uh, we all went up there. And, you know, at that time, he, you know, I had never really spent a whole lot on pigs and uh, he goes, I'll give you choice. You know, these here got some bad underlines, but they're good gilts. These, you know, a couple of the litter mates were good underlines. And I said, well, how much? He said $500. And of course, you know, I about fell over. Right. But, you know, back, back then that was, but I'm thinking that I've spent 4000 on the mother. So, right. you know, what's five? What's $500? So I, I bought her, purchased her, and uh, we called her Farah. And uh, we brought her home. We showed her down at the summer type conference. And I think she was fourth or fifth in class. And uh, that's when Dick Kemp kind of come in to, to play there at Top Cut. And uh, he started helping me match her up, seeing what I had and, and uh, some of the females that she was putting out. And we just started building from there. And, uh, you know, here we are today. I mean, it, we went from having champions at state fair to, you know, winter type conference to, you know, uh, that, that Yorkshire female kind of just like put us on the map. Cool. She's kind of led you to, to some success here uh, as, as you kind of hit on. T- tell us a, a little more, tell us a little more about that success today. You guys, you were telling me some, some really cool stories yeah. earlier. Yeah. I mean, we had, uh, uh, we had champion bear overall there at high state fair in 08. And uh, the the Voight, uh, Voight girls were were a big part of our uh, success with that. And uh, uh, every every and it was a purebred Yorkshire bear to boot. So and I remember, I think Jay Winter and uh, uh, Warren Beeler were the judges. And uh, that hog was uh, he was unique because he was probably a little bit ahead of his time where his skeleton was correct. He wasn't the heaviest bone one, but my Yorkshires have always had a great ham loin junction in them. And that came from that original female that I bought. And, and we still have that today. I've kind of made that a pride because Yorkshires can get a little crazy there in that ham loin junction at times. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we, once we had that champion bear there in 08, uh, you know, purebred Yorkshire. And then the following year, uh, you know, the influence kept on going and we had champion Yorkshire Barra again. I mean, he was fifth overall. Uh, you know, we've had champion Yorkshire go to the highest state fair, uh, the winter type conference, you know, it, it's been, and we've won some County fairs with some purebred Yorkshires, you know, they were fitting the times and, uh, uh, they were fitting, uh, obviously what we wanted to do. Well, it sounds really good. Yeah, you were telling me earlier about a, a Denver story, champion out at Denver, something that came comes back. Yeah, we uh, the, this year the the Zurcher, Kevin Zercher family had uh, bred the champion uh, 
Duroc Barra there at Denver. And that female came from our, uh, the mother of that Barra came from our herd. And uh, that really kind of made us happy because we'd been working on the red herd for, for about three or four years. And again, that kind of goes back to the initial female that we bought. Uh, and actually we bought the initial female to start our red herd from Kevin and uh, the genetics behind her. And I remember uh, uh, Nick Mock was a Sunglow feed rep at the time and, and we were looking at her and he goes, you need to buy her. So, mm-hmm. so I did. And uh, we kind of kept breeding her. Those hogs would flesh naturally. Uh, the growth was good. And of course they'd lay down and raise pigs with no problems. Um, the, you know, she was a triple bred Jesse James, Mississippi outlaw. And there's probably not a lot of that around today still, mm-hmm. but that influence is still around the country a little bit, but all my red stuff goes back to that initial sow. So I've had a white sow and a red sow now that we've initially bought that kind of started the whole thing here. And, uh, um, you know, in production here, we have the grandmother to that champion bear in Denver. She just had her, uh, unfortunately last litter she was very old but i've got three full sisters uh to that dam of that champion bear here that have pigs on them and uh, we couldn't be more happier oh wow that's good yeah you you got you got yorks you got you got the reds uh you, you've got some other breeds as well right yeah we uh, yeah we got some polands my my son for some reason uh, he saw polands and kind of fell in love with them and uh you know i'm like okay okay no problem you know we can do this and you know everybody needs to raise pharaoh a litter of Poland. Uh-huh. and i'm sure the guys that have Poland will, will will laugh because you know we we have to have a big box a bottle of oxytocin <laughs> and about three beers <laughs> and then i'll go out and pharaoh her because when she's having pigs, she will try to eat every one of them. Really? So, and, and it's happened with her mother and her grandmother. That it's just the same thing. Once they get through that, I'll give her a shot of oxytocin, which calms her down. Mm-hmm. And she'll, she'll sit up and I'll feed her about three lion and googles. <laughs> <laughs> and it calms her down and she lays down and then she's she's the best mother you ever want to have raised pigs oh wow i mean they will milk and and raise pigs and raise quality and but there's one reason why i got one pull and sow mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, if i had any more i'm not sure i could keep my sanity right and it's hard to say yep. no to those the, it's hard to say no to those little guys when they fall in love with something uh, yeah, I mean, he fell it. in love with the he fell in love with the red ones too because initially when he was born, I mean, all he saw was white hogs and blue bucks here. Right. And and I remember the first litter of red pigs we had, and he was probably three, maybe four, and he's up in the crate wiping the red pigs off, and then we thought, oh, that's nice. And he kept wiping them off and wiping them off, and he got real upset, and we're like, what's wrong, buddy? He goes, Dad, I can't get the dirt off of. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like Clark, they're Duroc, buddy. They were supposed to be red. And he just kind of, he was puzzled, but then he kind of went, oh, okay. And kind of walked on. He thought they should be white. <laughs> so yeah, he's, uh, it, it's, it's been a interesting, but he, every year he's got to have a Poland and or Hampshire peering or Duroc to show. He, he will not show white hogs or blue butts. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. I, and, and and that's fine. I mean, that's yeah, that's his choice. Mm-hmm. It's his project. Mm-hmm. So and now he's up. He's in. Uh, is he how old is how old a young man is he? He's thirteen. Okay. He just turned thirteen. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was thinking that looks yeah. like he's looks like he's in his in his teens. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's really cool. Well, that gives you that gives you the other pigs to be able to sell then, right? Right. I mean, we we try to be fair to our customers here. You know, I, I've had some one customer in particular um, that that raises and shows a lot of good sheep, Kevin Gump, and uh, he uh, 
he told me one time, he goes, you know, if I, if I don't have a choice chance to bid on your best pig, why should I come to your sale? Right. And I kind of took that to heart and, and uh, you know, we try to offer our very best. A lot of times if I see a pair, I'll offer the pair choice pair. And then the other one stays here. Um, and, and people have kind of responded to that. Um, you know, there's that always, you know, is that fair to your child? Is that this? Well, yes and no. He's okay with it. He would tell me if he wasn't. Uh-huh. So as long as he's got some decent pigs to show, you know, he's pretty happy. Right. Right. When you can raise winners yourself, why, uh, that's a lot of fun. Right. But, but when you can sell them, that's as fun. And then, I, yeah, I'm with you. That, uh, that gets to be a kind of a little touchy place there. So. I mean, if I had a hundred sows, it'd be one thing, but you know, when you only got 10 to 15 sows, you know, you, it's hard when you start pulling out the top end, that's, that's hard to sell the rest of the pigs. Right. Right. Why do you only have 10 to 15 sows? Well, I work full time. Okay. So, uh, you know, I, I was the probation officer for 27 years and, and, uh, now I'm a, a regional sales manager and, uh, for an uh, equipment company and uh you know uh if i could do this full time yeah i'd probably have more sales but uh, 10 to 15 sales is kind of my sweet spot and uh that's where it seems a little bit manageable uh, I honestly i might even go down to uh, a few less sales but uh that seems to be a good number for me right also, let's give a little bit of credit. You you also sell some you also sell some feed there out of the garage for for show pigs. Yeah, yep. We've been selling. I've been a Sungo distributor for so well lots of years. We've been pulling feed out of the Lewisburg plant there in Ohio since the late '90s uh, when Aikies owned it, and uh, we've kind of blossomed from there. And, and and I've sold feed for like Gene Rao there uh, across the border there in Ohio and. Uh, uh, you know, we've kind of built it to where we are today. My wife and I worked really hard. Uh, I figured if we're going to sell show pigs, I want to be able to provide a good quality product for them to feed the animals if they wish to. Um, you know, if you buy pigs from me, you don't have to feed Sunglow. You can feed whatever you want to feed. Um, but, you know, that's what we kind of started doing. And uh, it's kind of we kind of continued from there. We've built a pretty good clientele. Right, yeah, and, and get those get those pigs the, the right nutrition so that they can go out and do do good for you. Right, I mean, it, there's there's plenty of feed companies out there, and, and and the way I look at it, it's kind of like buying a truck. They're all pretty good. It's just whatever fits your program and what you like. You know, they all have products that are better than the other ones, but I'm most comfortable with Sunglow, and uh, I know how it works and how to feed it, and I've built the relationships with those those people and uh you know i'm not gonna lie yeah we we sample other products and and feeds and and um you know we keep coming back to the sun glow here Mm -hmm. yeah and they make that seem to make a big swath across the across the show pig industry right so yeah well chris uh where do you see this program going uh, and, and in five or ten years what what do you look to be doing what what do you think uh is going to change um, obviously with our program, when we, my wife and I, pre, pre-child, pre-Clark, we, uh, we bred early ones to take to a lot of customer appreciation sales for the boar studs. And, you know, uh, we've been to Purple Power, we've been to Top Cuts, we always went to McCoy's, and, uh, we always got along really well selling pigs. Mm-hmm. And we kind of got away from that. And because and, our customer base, you know, they wanted them young. They wanted them young. Now they want them older. Now they want them. Right. And it's like, so I think that's what I know. That's what I want to start doing is getting back to taking some of these older pigs, bringing some older ones for some of these customer sales and online stuff, but yet having a nice core group here to sell here at the house. Uh, I think that would be ideal for us. I think that would uh, maximize, hopefully, our profit margins, and uh, and uh, you know, give some of our 
better sows a chance to get some of those older females or males out, you know, and, and kind of see what other people like. Mm-hmm. And you've got a, you've got a, uh, breed pigs for, for different places in different states because you're not, you're not just selling the local people there, right? Right. I mean, we obviously most of our, most, the main majority of our pigs stay here in our County, uh, which our, our County here is a, I don't know. I, I kind of brag on it a little bit. It's quite unique mm-hmm. uh, because at the high state fair, I mean, we've had a grand or reserve champion in every species over there, mm-hmm. you know, and that's all the way to rabbits, chickens. Um, I don't think we've had a grand yet with the goats, but we usually do pretty well. Sheep, obviously. Yes. With the Gump family, uh, you know, we've had champion barrows come from this County and then obviously the steer portion with the Clark family mm-hmm. and, and and so forth, you know, we're, we're always, in, and some people refer to our fair at times like the little state fair. Right. Um, Cause people are, they're serious. And the, and the ones that go out and show outside the County in our, our County usually do are pretty successful wherever they go. So, but yeah, I mean, we sell, usually sell into four five, six counties. I mean, it really depends on the year. Uh, we've we've had uh, uh, champion up at New York State Fair before, um, and we've had uh, you know pigs that we've sent to Georgia. Um, there's a gentleman down there that buys them, and and he's happy. He's a return customer. He buys them sight unseen. Uh, I've got a couple customers that buy them sight unseen, and uh, you know we won the Duroc show up at Williams County Fair for like four years in a row. And he never saw the pig till he come to pick it up. So wow. I always try to uh, keep uh, keep my customers happy. Plus, you know, broaden our horizons a little bit here. Wanted to uh, folks wanted to break into this just a little bit here, and there has been a change since we have uh, first recorded this podcast with Chris Wintrow, and uh, so they have changed things due to the COVID nineteen. Uh, activities that are going on and so I wanted uh, Chris to jump back on here and be able to explain to you how this uh, sale is going to work this time. Chris uh, why don't you go right ahead. All right we have uh, obviously decided like many people to do an online auction however we've kind of uh, changed things up a little bit we've secured a uh, non-traditional online auction site uh, called 32 auctions it's kind of a self do-it-yourself site uh where you know you pick how your sale wants to run and you put your own pictures on and and those type of things and uh uh, we just felt we didn't want to there's so many online sales at different places that we didn't want to get lost in the shuffle uh not with the you know the set of pigs that we feel that we have here uh we just wanted to make sure uh, everybody uh, had a fair shot at these guys. We are opening the barn up on Friday, April 3rd, and uh, we'll uh, close the barn on, uh, I believe, Tuesday, the 14th of April. Um, the online auction um, will actually conclude on April Saturday, April 18th at noon. Um, we will have the link on our Facebook page out there and uh, anybody who was on our previous mailing list, they will also have the link to go to it. Uh, you have to have the link to get to the sale. Cause it's, it's like a semi private virtual bid board is pretty much what it's going to be. Uh, once people go to that and get registered, uh, we'll have all hogs on the sale site on uh, April 15th. Um, pictures, ear notches, descriptions. Um, that way people can uh, go on and bid and, and have three or four days to kind of do their bidding. What we'll do then on uh, Saturday, April 18th, uh, the auction will conclude, the online portion will conclude at noon. And then we were going to turn it into uh, extended bidding and that's when it becomes a live auction. You will be able to uh, bid on animals uh, starting at noon, but it has to be a call or text to me or my wife, which will have all those phone numbers provided. 
uh, for you on our Facebook page. Uh, and then we will continue to bid off the animals until the uh, 30 minutes lapses or bids cease. And uh, that way, if you don't get your favorite one, you can jump on and get your second favorite one. Um, if you need further information, obviously, we, we, we will relish taking phone calls from everyone and uh, explaining to it more. Uh, but we're just trying to give everybody a chance to get the pigs that they want. Okay, well, good. Will you give us those, those open barn dates again, please, Chris? Uh, April 3rd, Friday, April 3rd, uh, we're taking appointments. Obviously, we'll bring people in one group at a time, and we're going to have everybody kind of spaced out okay, to for the social distancing and stuff. And uh, we'll close the barn on April 14th. So that's going to give everybody uh, basically uh, two full weekends and a full week to get to the barn to, to see the hogs, and, uh, and uh, that way they can kind of make their pick. And, and it's another wrinkle to the sale is we'll have a set amount of pigs put on, but if you see a pig that, that, Hey, why aren't you putting this pig in the sale? Go ahead and give us that ear notch number. We'll put it on the sale for, for, uh, for the, for you guys to bid on. And, and, and you can add to it yourself. If you feel that there's hogs on there that, uh, that aren't on there that should, you can give those ear notches to us and we'll put it on the sale. Wow, that sounds like a, a really neat, uh, as you said, non-traditional type of an online sale. Yes, uh, a friend of mine that, that's big in the sheep business, uh, he he gave me some uh, guidance on that. He said uh, a lot of the sheep uh, breeders are doing that. Uh, they're they're letting people come in and give them tag numbers, and they'll put them on a sale site and. And they'll get a link sent to them, and they'll bid them off from there. And it's kind of like a private deal. And we kind of did the same thing, but we're kind of taking it a little extra step. Can they watch those pigs on uh, starting at noon? Can they watch the the bidding on those pigs? They can. Yeah, it'll it'll run just like a normal uh, auction will. Uh, they can, uh, except for yeah, when we close that at noon. I see what you're saying. When we close that at noon, no. It's just going to be bidding uh, by phone or text. And, and what we'll try to do is if we have two people on one pig, I'll try to get a person and my wife will try to get a person on the phone. And we'll just kind of do it by phone. Okay. We, we don't foresee a whole lot of that going on, but, you know, then we could be wrong. And that, you know, but we're going to do the best we can. Our goal is, is to make sure it's fair for everybody and, and try to get everybody their, their hogs that they want. On you got a great flyer, uh, different things like that. Where can we find some of that stuff if if we're listening and and we just want to go look at at some of this stuff? Well, we currently don't have a website as of right now. We're in the process of doing that, and uh, but we do have a Facebook page, uh, Wintro Show Pigs, and then I have a personal uh, Facebook page of Chris Wintro. And once you if you find one, you're going to find both, and and I try to post farm stuff on both of them um that way people kind of keep up to date um on what we're doing and and especially now this spring with uncertainty of uh how we're going to do the sale and 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 uh the structure it's going to be but th those are the best ways to do it i do post stuff on twitter and instagram and occasionally snapchat when uh, my son decides to help me out with that <laughs> but uh uh, he he thinks I ought to use the filters on it and send pictures out, but I I, I don't think so. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, I I try to try to post on 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 those three things, both Facebook pages and uh, Instagram and Twitter, just to kind of keep stuff up. But you can find me on all those and start following me and and uh, keep up your information with that way. Cool. Yeah, tell us about this flyer. This this flyer that you have got put together for the ad for this sale is is really really neat. Well, I, my wife is, and she won't admit to it, but she is very well versed when it comes to computers. And, you know, we kind of had a vision, I so to speak, of what we wanted to do with 2020. You know, what's your vision in 2020? And we kind of made it to where 
it was like a seeing eye chart. What's your vision in 2020? And, and, and uh, she has a f- real good friend at work that is a whiz kid on this kind of stuff that, that did this kind of stuff in, in, uh, in the past. And that's kind of what she does where she works. And uh, we kind of give her her vision. We send her the pictures and the captions. And then we just kind of critique it from there. And honestly, she did this in about three nights. Mm-hmm. And uh, we kind of would text back and forth or email back and forth what we want. And she would email us hard copies. And, and you know, and that's kind of, and even like our sale flyer last year, I thought it was tremendous too. Because um, we used to do the primetime magazine with Craig Ryder, but, mm-hmm. you know, they stopped doing that. And we would kind of let them do their thing with the flyer. But we kind of like our vision of what we want to do. And, and that's where we kind of come up with the theme for this year. Yeah, it's uh, it's really it's really neat, and uh, uh, yeah, the the eye chart and things, and then then you've got some winners down there on the bottom as well. Uh, yep, uh, you know we we concentrate. A lot of people come here just for purebreds, and, and that's fine. I mean, we we usually do uh, well with the purebreds around the county fairs. So, you know, I'm I'm the president of our uh, breeders association here, and you know it's been going on for quite a few years, and we, we decided to put breeds into our county fair and uh, our breed show is actually bigger than our crossbred show now. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, so a lot of the breeders around the county will, will have specific breeds and, and raise them. And, and uh, that was kind of one of my niches is, so to speak uh, was, you know, the Yorks and the Durocks and, and then the Polands and, We've had some success over the years, and, and uh, uh, we feel we got a pretty special group of uh, Durox and Poland this year, and uh, the Yorkshires are right in the mix too, and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, tell us uh, tell us about about some of those those pigs that that you've got uh, decided, and, and those litters that you're going to have pigs uh, from in this sale that that's going to be again the genetic power sale. Uh, we we've, we've got uh, several. Uh, litters here we had about 12 litters here that we're probably going to offer a lot of pigs out of um probably some of our more exciting litters more uh you know obviously i'm the breeder so i think they're all exciting but right you know we, we've got some litters here uh the old red sow that you know is the grandmother to the champion bear there at denver uh like i said this was her last litter unfortunately all the females will stay here however she had two barrows and that's about all she ever gives me but these dudes they're out of plan b at a thompson brothers and uh, i fell in love with that boar last fall when i went over and looked at him and uh, uh we mated him to her and uh these guys are just they've what i've been trying to do i've got the look we've got the stoutness uh, they're born the first of february there uh, i mean they're these two barrows here are going to be extra special. Uh, obviously, uh, we're getting ready to put them all on chips, and uh, they're, we're probably a little behind on doing that, but that's, you know, unfortunately, that's the way it goes. But we're getting ready to put them on chips, and uh, they're they're an interesting group. I mean, that, that red group, uh, you know, hip design, ankle placement, you know, bones, uh, head carriages are just, second to none uh so it's going to be interesting once they really start hitting the feeders and and, and how they develop um we've got a purebred yorkshire litter probably one of the last dock 100k litters sows out there um we bred her to sheep dog down at nate joseph's uh and uh, they're also born there the first of february and uh um she only gave us one bear out of that, and I, I was hoping for more Yorkshire bears, but, you know, that's how it goes. But we're going to have a nice set of Yorkshire females out of that. We're going to offer several of those in our sale. Uh, people are always looking for those first of February. These February purebreds are going to be really good for, like, the uh, NJS uh, Eastern Regional there in New York. Um, so that's, like, uh, I think in October. And uh, uh, we've got uh, – the Poland litter. Um, they are, after I got mom calmed down, <laughs> she gave us no gilts and all barrows. Oh, wow. So, yeah. 
and uh, quite honestly, I have never seen Poland barrows like this in my life. We used uh, forget about it there, Jim McCoy's. Uh, mom's a mom's a stress negative. That bore was a carrier, and uh, boy did he transmit heaviness of structure, obviously muscle. And these dudes are just when they stand next to the crossbreds, other than floppy ears, you really can't you really can't tell them apart. They uh, uh, they uh, they're extra special. I mean, there's five barrows in there we're going to offer. Uh, there's two in there I think are next level, all good quality barrows. But there's two in there I think are going to be next level. That's probably going to be a choice pen. Uh, for my son because you know he's got that pollen fever mm -hmm. uh, but again uh we're really pleased and you know i can pick out what i think is the best one now but it's not up to me in august it's up to the judge so uh, i've been wrong before right uh we have another uh plan b litter um uh, out of a stick this sal um she is a full sister to the mother of the Denver champion. And uh, we decided, and obviously I bred her to plan B and uh, for that stoutness and uh, of skeleton in uh, uh, length and neck and front end. And uh, I think we had a home run here. Mm -hmm. uh, these barrows are as square and big ribbed as I've seen red hogs. Um, they just, you put them, they put up their feet down where they're supposed to be. Uh, they are, when they come and go, they come and go with authority. Uh, they're also born there that first week in February. Um, they're exciting. Uh, I mean, red hogs change so much anyhow. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, long, long ago, they told me, you know, look at them when they're three weeks old and then don't look at them again until they're about eight weeks old. And because uh, they change so much. And, and I've kind of taken that to heart. Uh, we come to a crossbred letter here. And uh, they're out of Kingpin, which is down at McCoy's, uh, out of uh, probably one of my most influential crossbred lines. Uh, we've won a lot of shows with this crossbred line. Um, they go all the way back to uh, Major Feet Solid Gold that was there at Top Cut. But obviously, it, once again, um, it all started with that Yorkshire base. She's Yorkshire influenced Sal, but these pigs always lay down, have good quality pigs that, that raise. We're actually going to try to feed a boar out of this litter. I never feed boars because I always cut them and sell them as barrows. I mean, I know I can get what I want out of them as barrows, and, but this guy is probably the most unique pig we've put, in, uh, put on the ground as far as uh, bone and rib and shape. Uh, but he's got some litter mates in there that, that are going to be extra special. Um, we've got a blue butt crossbred litter here. They're having an amped up sow. Uh, we bred her to above the law. And, uh, you know, Jim McQuinn, she's down at, that above the law is down at McCoy's. And, and Jim told me, he goes, the above the law needs to be bred to a, a larger scaled, longer fronted Yorkshire sow, in which this gal was. Mm -hmm. And holy smokes, I, I mean, I have never seen stoutness and rib shape uh, on pigs like this before in my life. Uh, they're blue butts. So, of course, that's out for my, my son. He doesn't want anything to do with those guys. Right. You don't have to but, worry about saving one, do you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, they're all they're, open. This yeah. poor gal, uh, we had issues with her in the beginning. And, of course, you know, every show pig producer goes through it. The first pig she had, you know, I'm a big guy. I'm, I'm a 300 pound guy and I'm probably stronger than the average guy. And I couldn't get these guys out. I mean, I could get almost up to my elbow in her. So I know she was big enough to have them. So we took her to Ohio state for a C-section. And when they pulled these pigs out, I have never seen pigs this large. <laughs> it, it, uh, Sal's would have had trouble having these pigs and, and I felt sorry for her because I mean she's been a fantastic mother ever since we got her back home and actually I think we're going to give her another shot she's done so well but these 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 blue butt hogs there's three barrows and and uh and a guild in there uh, 
you get a flip a coin. I mean, they are just, they check all the boxes, I should say, you know, with stoutness, rib cage, soundness, uh, length of front end. I mean, they check all the boxes. They, they got mom's skeleton. And, you know, they got a contact amped up look in them, but yet they got the boldness and, and stuff of above the law. And uh, I think they're going to be a sale feature, all four of them. Uh, I usually don't let crossbred females. I don't keep too many of them, but I'm going to let her go. And, uh, but it's going to be interesting to watch them. Mm-hmm. They're, uh, they're pretty special. Um, we have uh, the next litter is out of dark chocolate. It's a, a crossbred litter. Dark chocolate is a litter mate to Kingpin there at McCoy's. Um, and the sow is the litter mate to, uh, I think we talked earlier about that little spotted up barrow that uh, the Douglas girls showed for me here a few years ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, that barrow was extra special, and we kept some females litter mate sisters to him and we made a dark chocolate to to that sow and uh, got a bunch of dark crosses and uh, they fit the bill they fit the bill that uh, the soundness and structure and and, and the density that they have is awful good again we're going to have a mass weaning here in the next few days and, <laughs> and get them get them on the chips and stuff um we have a younger red litter here She's another stick, this sow. She's uh, my son's show guilt from last year. Uh, she was a carbon copy of the guilt we sold to Zercher family that, that had the champion there at Denver. In fact, I felt she was better through her front two-thirds than that sow was. And, and we made it her to family tradition there at Schaefer's Gold Rush. And from the day they were born to today they were born about the 12th of february it's been i have never had the consistency of a litter of these pigs i mean if they were not ear notched and they come at you you can tell any am apart oh wow i mean they are stout their skeletons are just impeccable they've got a great show pig look to them the length of body is correct on them uh, the barrows are just they're going to be fun to watch. My son's kind of taking the liking to that group. Um, um, so, you know, he may like certain groups. They may not be the best ones in the barn, but you know what? They're his project, so I'm going to let him pick out what he wants. So there's probably going to be another choice, Barra, in that group. Choice will stay home for him. And uh, there's about six gilts in there that uh, I'd be proud to show any one of them. I mean, they're just that consistent. And uh, it's going to be interesting uh, to watch them guys grow. Uh, we do have another red litter, another full full sister. Actually, she is a litter mate sister to uh, Kevin Zercher's guilt there that we sold. And uh, she was bred to He's the Future there at Schaefer's Gold Rush. And uh, they're a little bit younger. Uh, they were born 17th of February. And, uh, again, uh, the – People are got these August and September fairs. Uh, these little red guys are, I can't say enough about my red crop this year. We had a pretty good crop last year, but these, these guys are just, this crop is just, it's amazing. I, I'm, I'm very tickled with them. Um, we come and we kind of round out February here. We've got uh, uh, a purebred Yorkshire litter uh, out of Mai Tai there at Lean Value Sires. Um, out of uh, probably a really good female, actually it goes back to uh, uh, our genetics on both sides because we had bred a boar that we put down at uh, Doc Sherritt's house called Stretch, and uh, we kept several Stretch females. And boy, could they lay down and raise pigs! So uh, unfortunately, they didn't keep him around long enough to uh, have people use him. But the ones who did, they have a bunch of uh, daughters out of him, and so do we. So uh, these hogs are good. They're thick. They're big boned. Uh, they're going to be great for these later fairs. Uh, the Yorkshire bear is in there. Uh, they're growing really good. Uh, it's going to be nice for, you know, again, August and, and September fairs uh, for these kind of pigs. The gills in there are going to be neat. Uh, I'd like to see some of these guys get shown at some of these later uh, shows 
uh, this fall and see what they could do. Um, then we've got uh, two March litters there. I've got two crossbred litters. Um, one's out of, another one out of Mai Tai out of a 225K sow. Uh, those hogs look nice, uh, good color patterns on them. They're blue. She's all black, uh, mm -hmm. but it's funny because uh, they come out white and with some blue on them. So I, I thought, that, thought that was interesting. Then we got a blue butt litter that we round out uh, like March 11th. Uh, they'll be for sale later, uh, later in April, 1st of May. Uh, that's a good solid litter. They're out with another amped up sow. And uh, those amped up sows have done a nice job for me, raising good quality pigs. And uh, I can't wait to see them and they get a little older. Mm -hmm. That pretty much rounds out our, our group. Um, we hopefully will sell in that 40 to 45 range there on the 18th. And uh, uh, that's typically our sweet, sweet spot. We try to have that 40 to 50 range. And that's, that's about all, all we want to sell. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. Yeah, I was going to ask you how many how many are you going to have, and um, yeah, so, so that's great. Yeah, because it talks like it sounds like you got a lot of litters there to to uh, uh, sell a lot of pigs out of. So yeah, um, well, cool, good deal. Um, forty to forty five pigs, and and again, uh, I want to want to invite everybody over to uh, Conover, Ohio, for our uh, for our Canada people and our Ireland people and, and even Jamaica listeners that we have. Where is uh, where is Conover, Ohio? Where where's it where's it at? I always tell people we're in God's country, but uh, I think God's country is everywhere. So that narrow, yeah, that narrows it down. <laughs> we are uh, we are about forty miles north of Dayton, Ohio. We're right off Interstate 75. Um, we're in the, I would say, we're, like I said, 40 miles from Dayton. We're probably right at a little over an hour from Richmond, Indiana. Mm -hmm. uh, we're kind of in a good spot here because we're kind of in the western part of Ohio a little bit there, west central part. Um, so, I mean, we can get to Indianapolis and Indiana in like two hours. So, I mean, we're, we're, we're like eight miles, nine miles from interstate 75. So we're kind of in a sweet spot here, I think. Mm -hmm. About, about three hours from Louisville for the Southern people. Yep. Um, yep. Yep. About three hours from Louisville. Yep. Two, two hours ish from Cincinnati or so. Yep. And we're about an hour and 15 minutes from Columbus. So, so, you know, we're not, not terribly far. I mean, when you're buying livestock, three hours is nothing. Right. 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 Well, good. Uh, can, can you get them some, some pictures, some videos of these pigs? What, what do you guys do with that? Yeah, we'll be posting, uh, pictures in, uh, coming up. Uh, and actually we have a January litter of Yorkshire's. Uh, that uh, we're going to sell. We've got three barrows in that Yorkshire litter. They're born January 20th. Uh, they're sired by Oh Yeah from Thompson Brothers. And uh, they are out of a, uh, probably, the, well, she is the one of the last oldest direct descendants of uh, our foundation of females that we've had here. And uh, we're going to keep the females back, obviously, to put back in the herd. But we've got three pretty dandy barrows that we're going to sell here, and we're going to get get them pictured this weekend and we've got some pictures done now but if you've ever pictured pigs uh it's uh it's a fun time especially if you have your wife out there it really tests your marriage and uh, i'm sure a lot of people know what i'm talking about but uh, actually my son's been helping me and and uh he doesn't complain too much so I, it's kind of cool <laughs> we're gonna try to get the, get them guys pictured this weekend and get them all up and and uh that way for people to see and, uh, uh, and go from there. I mean, we're going to sell them guys off the farm and, uh, it's kind of a first come first serve basis, but there's three barrows in there. And I think they're all three unique in there and what they, I think they can offer people. Uh, I think they can offer a variety of, uh, July fairs, uh, in there. And there's even, uh, there's one guy in there. It's probably just a tad smaller than the other one. And his body style is a little different he would probably be one to uh, slow grow for Columbus. Uh, he he would be just kind of way they're made and, and uh, uh, the boar that they're out of, uh, they're pretty much would be right for that. Right. 
Well, good deal. Yeah. So, and you'll put those up on your Facebook page at at Wintro, yeah. Wintro Show Pigs. Yep. Yep. And uh, and then probably have them on your on your uh, own page too. And and uh, yeah, to go back to your to your Facebook page just a little bit. Uh, you've posted a lot of stuff on uh, on some feeds and and different things like that. So so it's a it's an education looking through that uh, through that Facebook page as well. Yep. We we try to. Uh... Uh, you know, a lot of feed companies are doing how-to videos, which I think is a great idea for, for all the feed companies. And uh, I try to keep uh, abreast of all the sun glow stuff that's coming up. And, uh, and then the how-to stuff, you know, everybody feeds these feeds a little different. And, uh, you know, we've had uh, our sun glow meetings this spring there and uh, over in, by Indianapolis. And, uh, you know, we're trying to get feeding strategies with no paling in them. And, uh, I think, uh, we've kind of got things accomplished pretty good and, uh, we're going to be helping our customers, uh, with, uh, no paling feeding strategies, you know, cause everybody in Ohio, unfortunately, Ohio had to be the, the knee jerk state. And, uh, some of the counties are allowing paling, but you got to take your animals home and, and market them themselves. And then some of the counties are, you got to sign your affidavit and put your hogs on the truck. So we're going to try to help both ways out and uh, see what we can't get accomplished. Yeah, one of the one of the things that's that's uh, changed the show pig world and uh, and coming up coming up this this summer. So it'll be interesting to see all of those things. And so uh, commend you guys on on putting those together. So. Uh, yeah. Chris, well, I appreciate, uh, I appreciate you coming on here on before the bid and, uh, I want to wish you great success with that, uh, with that sale there on, uh, Saturday, April the 18th in Conover, Ohio. And, um, just, uh, just wish you luck with that. And, and, uh, sounds like you got some great things going on there and, uh, uh, really proud of those. Sounds like you're really proud of those animals and you should be, uh, yeah, yeah. And so, uh, so just want to want to wish you luck with all of that, and and want to thank you for uh, being here with us on before the bid. And I thank you too, Andy. It's been uh, it's been fun. Well, I appreciate that very much. And again, guys, go to Wintro Show Pigs, and uh, you can get some information there, or you can go and and follow Chris Wintro. You can see the uh, ads on there. You can see all those updates on the Genetic Power Pig Sale. That if everything goes right will be held Saturday, April 18th at Conover, Ohio, and you can find that uh, address and more information out uh, on those Facebook pages. And, uh, again, we want to we wanna thank Chris for being our guest tonight, and uh, we want to thank you for listening to another di- edition of Before the Bid. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of Before the Bid. For more information and to learn more about upcoming podcasts and sales, visit us at beforethebid.podbeam.com or Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram pages. For information on being a guest on Before the Bid, please email us at beforethebid at gmail.com or one of our social media pages. Remember, that's beforethebid at gmail.com. Happy sales to you, and we will talk to you next time on Before the Bid.